Amen. Good morning. It's lovely to be here this morning. And my message is, God came down. And under the subheading, skinny tinsel. <laughs> so I'll just find the verses in Matthew. I'm going to read the verses and I'm going to talk a little bit. And it says, An angel appeared to Joseph. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with a child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Manuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home to be his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So, Joseph and Mary were pledged to be married. And in the Jewish faith, first, there was three steps to the marriage. First, both families had to agree to the union. Second, there was a public announcement, and so the couple were pledged publicly to be married, similar to an engagement, except the union could not be broken, even though they hadn't been married, that was classed as they were married already. And then third, they got married. So Mary came to Joseph, and she told him she was going to have a baby. They were not yet married, so it appeared that Mary had been unfaithful. And by law, she could have been stoned to death. But Joseph was a righteous man. In Psalm 112, it says, Surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is secure, and he will have no fear. In the end, he will have triumph over his foes. So G Joseph decided to marry Mary and then divorce her quietly. But I just want to look at how Joseph felt at that time. Mary and him were betrothed. The families had agreed. It was a public announcement. And then his beloved came and said, Joseph, an angel has told me I'm going to have a child and I'm pregnant. Now, Joseph was a human man. He was a special man because he was chosen by God to be Jesus' earthly father. But he must have felt confused, bewildered. Even his heart was broken because the love of his life, he didn't know that he didn't, I would say that he kind of was confused because he wasn't sure if he believed the angel. That's why he was going, the, the story of the angel, that's why he was going to marry her and divorce her quietly. He didn't know what we knew. We can read and we have the overview. We have the inside story but this was Joseph's life as it was unfolding. And I just wondered if you've ever felt like that, confused or bewildered. I think Joseph went away and he took some time and he prayed. And as we've heard this morning, Sarah speaking about the power of prayer, the power that we have in prayer, it's just phenomenal. So I would encourage you to keep on praying. And if you feel like that, broken, lost or confused, Ask God to come down and be with you and feel his presence. You know, I've told you about my life before and, you know, my family and my life are part of me. They're part of my stories. They're part of my DNA. My family make up me. And what makes up me, my DNA, is my family. My husband, my daughter, my grandchildren, my brothers, my friends, my aunties, my uncles. They all make up my DNA. And about, well, it was just coming up 16 years ago, my mum passed away. And, you know, I felt I didn't have enough time with her. 
we still miss her today. We still talk about her. We still have, you know, our, in our hearts. But God was with us at that time as a family, as he was with Joseph when Joseph was going through turmoil. God was with Joseph, and he was with me, and he was with my family at that time. And I feel like God knows the pain of a broken heart. God knows the pain of loneliness. And in that time, I can remember praying for my family and for me and for my friends praying with me. In Psalm 91, verse 4, it says, He will cover you with his wings, and you will be safe in his care. And I think for me and for my family, I think that is a picture for all of us to share and use on my family as well, use on my church families. And I think sometimes we just need to take a moment and sit in the presence of God and remember that Jesus came down, that God came down as a baby for all mankind because he loved us so much. And I think Joseph cried out to God. I think he was honest about his pain, about how he felt. Today, we all need to be honest with God and about how we feel. If we had a loss, or if we feel lonely, or if we feel betrayed, we can be honest with God. And I do think that he was shaken. He was shaken in his love for Mary. He was shaken. He was in turmoil. What will I do? Oh, all the family know. Everybody knows about this. Everybody knows about my marriage. And here she comes and tells me, an angel, an angel told her that she was you know, go and have a baby. I, I, I just kind of get my head around it. But I think as well, Mary was praying. Mary understood the bigger picture. Mary knew she had been visited by an angel. Mary knew that God had told and she believed. So Mary was praying as well for Joseph. So again, it's, you know, it is the Christmas story. It is the first Christmas, but there's a real, you know, deep message about praying and about how God answers prayer. And I think Mary would have been praying for God to send an angel to Joseph. That's the only way that I think Mary, in her mind, he would believe. You know, she went and told him, and the face of Joseph must have said it all. There was no joyous there was no wow an angel told you this this is great we're in this together i was like right okay so you're having a baby yeah, conceived by the holy spirit all right and then he went away and thought i'll have to divorce her quietly i don't want anything to happen to her because his heart still loved her but he still felt the betrayal and then god sent an angel to joseph god answered his prayer, and he answered Mary's prayer. And verse 20 it says, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. The angel told him, confirmed what Mary had said, then Joseph believed. This was a supernatural event, and it was beyond all human logic. Even when I read the story, I think, you know, it's, it's wonderful, it's amazing that we're part, you know, we can read and be part of this story, but it's still sometimes, it's beyond my comprehension. This reveals an important truth about Jesus. He is God and he was human. Our God took on the limitations of humanity so he could live and die for the salvation of all who believe in him. Jesus' name means the Lord saves. The Lord saves. And the Lord Jesus, he wants to save all of us. He wants to know, he wants us all to know how much we are loved. And when I was thinking about the first Christmas and this Christmas, it, when I read the first Christmas and about the nativity, about Mary and Joseph going off to Bethlehem and the shepherds and the angels, the whole kitten caboodle, I love it. I love it all. I love the nativity. I love carol service. I love sitting thinking about how much I am loved by God, how much God loves me and that he loves his people. He loves this world. And... I just was thinking about my home life when I was a kid and 
what we did when we were young, and we had some family traditions that are kept up now. And one of our family traditions was we went and we always had a real tree. I only kept that tradition up once because of the pain needles. I think we put it up and then it, me and my husband were first married and we thought we'd have a real tree and we'd have a lovely tree and it'd be smelling of Christmas and it'd be lovely. Um, and I didn't realise that you, you had to put water in the bucket and you shouldn't have it by a radiator. So basically it was the one and only and it was a disaster. But when we were little, we'd go off to the fruiters on Sunderland Road and it'd be me and my dad and my three brothers and they were all lined up outside the fruiters, they were already chopped down and you could choose a one. And they weren't in nets or anything like that. They were just standing there. So we'd all choose the one between me. Um, and we, we three brothers would carry it home. And I'd walk in front with my dad. And we'd get home. We would, would already have a bucket wrapped in Christmas paper. We didn't have any of the fancy, you know, tree skirts and tree baskets. It was a bucket from the back garden. That had probably been there the year before. So we'd go out, we'd rinse it out. We'd put some house bricks in, put some water in. And my dad would fashion it to stand. Then we'd decorate it. And we decorate it with baubles and tinsel. Now, the tinsel I had when I was little was skinny tinsel. And it was, it was skinny tinsel. Now, this is the tinsel I had. Skinny tinsel. Now, this tinsel actually is probably luxurious tinsel. If I go back to being little, this was a luxurious piece of tinsel. And we'd have, you know, as my nana would say, umpteen pieces. They'd be on the tree, they'd go round and round the tree, and this would go on the mirror. A piece of this on the mirror, can you remember like that? On the mirror, yes. They'd go oh, up a lamp, round the middle of the lamp, like that. If we had any spare, we'd throw them over the curtains. It, it, it just, the house was just tinsel, everywhere tinsel. So that's the type of tinsel we had, and there would be red, green, gold, silk, any, anything we could get our hands on, really, would just have bags and bags of this stuff, and we loved it. The house, it, it, it just exploded with tinsel when we went in the front room, and we loved it. Me, my three brothers, my mum and dad decorated everywhere. So, when I was in the shop a few years ago, I thought, oh, I need some tinsel. I've got a, a fake tree, and I like to wrap the tinsel around the middle bit. You know, so you don't see the middle bit. So when you look at the tree, you see all oh, the little sparkly bits around the middle. So when I was looking for tinsel, I couldn't believe my eyes when I found this. <laughs> Fat tinsel? Can you believe it? I mean, this, look it. This tinsel to this tinsel. Fat tinsel, skinny tinsel. I thought, that's amazing. Fat tinsel is amazing. And I showed my brothers. I said, you'll never believe it. I found some fat tinsel. And even then, we're like, that's amazing, that. I've never seen fat tinsel. I mean, we couldn't believe it from this to this. We were joyous when we found fat tinsel. Now, my friend said to us a few weeks ago, what colour is your tree? And I said, it's green. She says, no, 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 what colour are you doing your tree? I says, what colour am I doing my tree? Well, it's just going to stay green. <laughs> no. What is your theme? I says, my theme, baubles. <laughs> no. What colour are your baubles? I says, well, they're the same colour every year. I've had them for years. There's a couple of angel wings. There's a little bit of tat on. I mean, some beautiful things that my daughter's made over the years. Um, you know, half-finished baubles. Remember them when you went to the, the Christmas craft and you had to get a bauble? a little sequence and put a pin in and pin it around the bauble. I think I've got four half finished on my tree, but happy days. No, she says, now you can do a theme. I says, you can do a theme. Yes, you can do a theme. You can have colours. So, oh, I says, can you? And she says, yes, you can have like a gold themed tree or you can have like light blue and dark blue. I says, oh, that's very nice, but mine's just staying the same as it is. But I know somebody who's got a silver tree and they've got silver baubles and they've got, um, what was it, blush pink baubles that match it. Oh, it's very, very fancy, very fancy. They've got the big baubles on the bottom, then they've got the middle baubles, then they've got the little baubles and they've got this beautiful big star on the top. Oh, it's lovely, it's all fashioned, it's all colour co coordinated. Now that's the type of tree that when 
the little one came in from school, it made a lovely felt oh, Christmas tree. It was all stuck up with tat and glue and oh, it was, oh you, you couldn't barely touch it. It was stuck to your fingers, but you put it on the middle of that tree. And I said, oh, that looks beautiful there. Eh? Well done. Now that lovely felt Christmas tree, it ended up round the back because it didn't match. What? Yeah, yeah, you see, it didn't match. No, we've overcome that. Do you know what? He's got a tree in his room now, so he can't have his own stuff on it. And he is just like me. This is my grandson. He's threw everything on it. Oh, he's borrowed some baubles off me. He's got some off his friends. He's got some. And the tree, it's this big. And honestly, it's groaning with the stuff it's got on it. It's like, oh, oh please, no more. He says, Nan, I think that tree could have two stores. I says, I think you're right. I says, we can put two stores on the top of that tree. It's wonderful. And do you know what? You'll never guess. I'm going to ask you to guess this. There's skinny tinsel. There's fat tinsel. What now can you buy to go on a tree? Have a guess. Tell me. Any guesses? What? Lights, yes. You get lights. Anything else? Any, you, you'll never guess it. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to wager. I know we shouldn't be gambling in the church, but I feel like God's saying you'll win. Fake snow? No, I, I, you'll never get it, right? I tell you. Feather board. <laughs> These are sold in the shops. Feather boards now. There's one gone. Feather boards, you can get these to go around your tree. Now, when I looked at that, I thought, hey, you're having a laugh. But then, when I've seen it on a tree with the silver baubles and the pink blush baubles, I have to say, it does look rather wonderful. So that's that's part of my Christmas tradition and another Christmas tradition which I really wanted to share with everyone this morning is my mum had, I don't know if I've got some chocolates on the tree. Now we never had an advent calendars, I don't know if you did, but I can never remember having an advent calendar. I've asked my brothers and them can't either. So when I was little, you know, just going back 30 years ago when I was just little, I speak loosely. Um, so when I was little, we had chocolate on the tree. And there were these, these are bauble chocolates, but you could get Santa chocolate or ranger chocolate. Oh, and every Saturday in December, so the four Saturdays leading up to Christmas, we could have a chocolate off the tree. We didn't have chocolate in the house. We didn't have chocolate crisps or anything like that. We used to have a bowl of nuts. Did you, you got them once a year, nuts. We didn't have a nut cracker. We had a hammer. So we'd hammer the nuts on the kitchen floor, we'd pick up the bits and we'd eat them on a Saturday night, and then, oh, you could have a bauble, well, or Santa or chocolate off the tree. And me mum, me dad, me and my three brothers would eat this chocolate and would savour it. It was absolutely wonderful. We loved it. And the chocolate, it wasn't like lovely creamy milk chocolate, it tasted like a bit like chicory and cough medicine. Can you remember that? The chocolate, oh, it was lovely though. So we had it and we savoured that moment. Now I'm going to ask my two helpers, I've got two helpers to give out a chocolate. Everyone's going to get a chocolate here this morning. So if my two helpers can give out a chocolate. Just take a chocolate. Because I think sometimes we just need to strip it back to skinny tinsel. We need to... Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like this part of the sermon. So we need to strip it back to skinny tinsel. We all sometimes get so wrapped up in getting our trees up, getting our decorations up, getting the presents, buying the presents, wrapping the presents, giving the presents, and sometimes we are exhausted and it's Boxing Day and we forgot about Christmas. We forgot about the Christmas story. We forgot about Jesus loved us so much that he sent Jesus for us. That God loved us so much that Jesus came down for us. We just need to strip it back. And Luke 2, 10, it says, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Rick Warren said, the good news of Christmas is, that is worth celebrating for three reasons. It's personal. I bring you I bring you good news. It's positive. Good news of great joy. And it's universal. It's for all the people. 
It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, or where you're headed. This news is for you, for all your family, for all your friends. This news is for you. I bring you good news of great joy that for all the people, for you. God loves you. God is with you. God is for you. The reason for Christmas is the love of God. Now, the first Christmas with Mary and Joseph would just must go back to basics, to skinny tinsel, to remember the love of God and not to get caught up in all the razzmatazz. Now, that's all right in itself as long as we're not overwhelmed with it. If I could just ask Paul to come um, back up in the rain, please. Now, I want me to take a moment. I want me to unwrap this chocolate. Those of you who's already ate it. <laughs> and just think about, if Paul could just play along as I'm speaking, I just want you to just think about the love that God has for you. The love that God has for your family and that God does answer prayer. If we think of the first Christmas, we think of the prayers Mary prayed, the prayers Joseph prayed, we think that God came down. Jesus came for us. And the good news is for all of us, for all of our friends and family. Now, when you're thinking, think of a time where God really spoke to you. We are light bearers. We have the Holy Spirit in us and we are God's good news. We, you, me, who are Christians who believe in the good news, we believe in the virgin birth, we believe in the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, we are light bearers. And sometimes at Christmas, it can be a really dark time for people. Let's take our light out into the world. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, let your light shine out of us. In Jesus' name, and I thank you, Lord, I thank you for Christmas. Amen. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord.